So most, most folks are always fascinated about uh, driving on Mars, and they say, do you joystick your robot on Mars? The answer to that is no. It's you know, at the closest point, it takes five minutes to send a signal from here to the rover, right? By the time it gets to the rover and finishes driving and sends it back, you, may, you might have driven it to a rock or something. What we actually do is we do what parents do with their kids. If you're a teenager, when I was a teenager, I remember my mom, we wake up and my mom has a list of chores that I have to do, right? You gotta wake up, you gotta eat at this time, you gotta take your siesta, which we never did. <laughs> you gotta have your snack and your tea. So that's what we do to the rover. We tell the rover on a daily basis, we give it a list of things. We program it and say, wake up at eight o'clock. When you wake up, take a picture of this rock, drive there, do this, and at 1 p.m., there'll be a satellite coming overhead. Get all, gather all your data and ship it to the satellite. And that's how we drive the rover. So we give it a list of chores. The rover is semi-autonomous. It's like a very good teenager. We design the rovers to be autonomous. But when we talk about autonomy, we talk about safety, right? So we, we've designed and tested the robot in such a way that we know the robot is not gonna kill itself. If I ask the robot to drive over a cliff, I can assure you the rover will not drive over the cliff because we have got safeguards. So there are safety measures that we put in it. We, yeah, are there sequencing errors? Yes, there are sequencing errors that can lead to, but we do try to catch those on the ground and we do set up the robot that it doesn't do anything silly.